So we will continue from where we have left last time. Um, right. So I gave, uh, can you remember in T2, I'll give you one question, right? And uh, we will do questions like this um, at least every day before I commence the meet, uh, commence the lecture schedule, right? Uh, now, can you remember we discuss? Uh, I gave you a question in T2. Uh, one the first um, uh, one uh, well, I requested for you all to uh, to see whether you can answer the discussion. Okay, so then um, what this question is asking um, you you have given a different set of customer group segment and ask you to come up up come up with. What is the so what is the why this particular customer uh, segment or customer group or customer category is important to you? And the second one, uh, so what are the financial products and services you are offering to uh, this type of segments, right? And the third one, what are the marketing strategy you are going to propose to the bank if you want to promote this product to this segment, right? Okay. Uh, first, we look at it, uh, farmers, we'll take one example, farmers, right? Now, let's look at it, um, farmers, okay? Right, so I'll, I'll just explain to you about the farmers. Okay, now, why farmers are important to uh, banks? That's the first one. Now, the first point I need to just to talk to you, just listen to me, right? And, you know, Sri Lanka is an agricultural-based country right so therefore we are um, so our economy is purely based on agriculture farmers make a valuable contribution to the first of the economy that is the first point the importance of farmers so that particular segment to banks because they are the um, uh, the people who may contribute to the national economy because the Sri Lanka is a um, agricultural based economy first point second point now uh, if these people are usually attached to the bank um, and they can uh, uh, expand their production uh, and getting to the um, saving to the banks, right? So that's the second point. Third one you can say, uh, now based on such uh, uh, funds that mean uh, money from his their money from their uh, fd or maybe the savings account a bank can offer them uh, um uh, some loans now some loans mean uh for cultivation purposes and things like that okay now uh, and also uh, bank can build up a long-term relationship with those farmers right and and also, you, you noted that uh, most of the farming community are moving, when they want a financial requirement, financial assistance, they usually go to the informal sector and to borrow money from them. And for that, uh, you have, to, I mean, the farmers need to pay high interest rate. So that is why farmers are important to the bank. So what are the products uh, and services you're offering to uh, financial uh, farmers? One, of course, you know, the very famous one is pawning advances, right? Um, and uh, you, you, uh, they will borrow money from more, uh, I mean, pawning their uh, um, gold articles. So you, you can earn a lot of money from uh, through pawning businesses, right? Second, next one, maybe open savings accounts with them, right? Uh, and also you can offer some sort of a um, leasing financial leasing facility to, for them to buy some uh, two-wheeler tractors and things like that okay so these are the financial product you can offer to farmers and what are the marketing strategy you can propose to them one of course you bring them to financial inclusion now you know what is financial inclusion also right and conduct um, educational programs house to house campaign some nice tv commercial and things like that you can use to promote the farmers right okay now let's look at it another 
uh, another uh, segment or another target group uh, we take um, ladies for an example ladies you know so why ladies are important to the uh, banks because they have the major decision um, maker in your family right so ladies are the major uh, decision maker in your family and also uh, Sri Lanka uh, large population usually when you are compared with male and female female is consisting of more um, population than uh, male so that's another reason and also female are into various working segments most some of most of them are teachers and most of them are semp employed and garment uh, factories they are working and beauticians uh, banking they are the people who are conducting um, montessori and things like so you have a wide range of business opportunities right that is why ladies are important now what are the financial products we are catering to ladies banks now banks are usually having different different uh, ladies products you no know, from uh, nsb you have a three and then you have a apsara and then you have a aralia you right uh, yeah, like that there may be a lot of um a lot of uh, to me uh, financial product you can offer to them and also you can offer a lot of uh, business um, loans to them um, self-employment loans uh, startup loans and things like that right sme loans also you can offer to them then what how can you communicate with them and also personal uh, as also pony right pony products then you can carry out a lot of advertisement catering to the ladies and cooking demonstration um then uh, advertising your product in woman papers and some specific TV programs like you know uh, I don't know whether some ladies are watching this uh, Rasa Sarani you know some training some cooking demonstration programs and beauty pageants um, right okay uh, and also some competition like now NDB is conducting something called Vanita Vasana Abhimani or something so these are marketing opportunities for banks to get that ladies account into the business right so why ladies are important second what are the financial products you can propose to them how can you market your product right okay now with this uh, next time we will try to do another two um another two questions right okay so we are uh, we just answered the question which i gave you in the t2 number one slide uh example i have given you now farmers and ladies right for next week we may uh, look at it another one or two products okay all uh, right now so just recap uh, what we have learned last time last week okay <coughs> right we are in the protecting customers we discuss a customer charter in greater length right so we discussed last time what are the minimum information you must incorporate in your key fact document then we discussed what are the mandatory displays you need to show to your bank in your branch premises right uh, and what are the terms and conditions we discussed then what are the compensation from cancellations or withdrawal of your product and services from your existing product portfolio right then we discuss uh protection from agents of banks right then we discuss uh, complaint measure and relief and also we discuss customer obligation towards bank we have completed this part last week under customer charter then um, we continue to discuss under protest customer we discuss not only the banks there are financial institutions uh for leasing companies and finance companies also come uh, central bank introduce uh, a financial protection framework like customer charter then we discuss financial mis-selling what is financial mis-selling why people tend to do mis-selling how to avoid that uh, and things like that 
and then we discuss under that financial custom education and financial literacy right uh, then we discuss uh, financial inclusion and banking density and what is the relationship between financial inclusion and banking density and uh, then we discuss the position of sri lanka in relation to banks duty of confidentiality right and where we have stopped last time under this i can remember i told i i told you um, i'm going to tell you some some case uh, study uh, with respect to uh, breaching of this uh, duty of confidentiality by employee now it's a very famous case and this is very important for uh, low classes as well now uh, the case called um, Garmini Fonseca versus People's Bank right I just tried to explain to you the case very interesting one right uh, Garmini Fonseca versus um, People's Bank of Sri Lanka now you know who is Garmini Fonseca? Garmini Fonseca is basically a uh, uh, Garmini Fonseca is a uh, you know is an actor, no famous actor, and uh, some time he became a um, deputy speaker to Sri Lankan government, deputy speaker, right? And um, Garmini Fonseca, while he was uh, performing as a deputy. Uh, leader there's a big paper article published in the rave you know what is a rave uh, victor ivan you know the victor ivan is the editor of that rave paper and a big front page uh, topic carried by a rave paper uh deputy speaker in singular i put it in deputy speaker uh uh katanaika mahajana bank water polutiai right that is the that is the caption. Rave Patri Tipi Mukanda Gamini Fonseca, Emagila Nam, Mukha Gamini Fonseca, Deputy Speaker, Nyoja Katanaika, Mahajana Bankota, Polutia. is a big front page caption. So it's, it's insulting to the Deputy Speaker, right? So all the information have because Gamini Fonseca, yes. He took a loan from um, uh, took a loan from People's Bank, Tissamarama branch, right? All the details are given in the paper. He took a loan from um, Tissamarama branch uh, at uh, uh, People's Bank and to build a, um, the restaurant or maybe the hotel called Sanasum. And during that time, there may be a JVP issues and all anyhow what happened uh, he is not in a position to build this house uh, build this hotel right and he has not paid the loan right so they what Gamini Fonseca has put a case not against the railway but Gamini Fonseca filed actions against the people's bank why secrecy of information customer confidentiality then Garmini Fonseca's lawyer filed against People's Bank under what? That law, Section 77, confidentiality not maintained by the bank. So the People's Bank head of his file action, I mean, take disciplinary against who? The manager of the Samarama branch. Why? Because you are, as a manager, you are not supposed to provide all the information to the Ravi. Right, he may have taken, but manager take the responsibility. Otherwise, manager has to tell who has given this information. Right now, the case is going on while cases is going on under confidentiality. Right, uh, people's bank head office have filed against the Tissamarama branch. So, while the case is going on, poor uh, Tissamarama manager, uh, you know, honestly, he is not tolerate this man, Naruna. He was that. Now, you know, once you die, the case is over, no? I don't know, we can do it again. What I did here, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Right? Now, again, now, what people's back and say? Because now, the Samarama manager has died, and therefore, we cannot continue the case. And then, this is a... 
lawyers of the uh, Kamini Fonseca, the deputy speaker, file another case against People's Bank, what is called vicarious liability. Vicarious liability. What do you mean by a vicarious liability? Since Isamarama manager is an employee of the People's Bank. So therefore, you cannot say, I, uh, People's Bank end of it cannot escape from this case saying that he has died and gone, so can, case cannot be continued. Right, but after some times, you know, uh, the People's Bank head office and uh, authorities and the uh, lawyers of the Garmini Fonseca uh, come to a conclusion and settle the case. But only one case in Sri Lanka against this uh, uh, customer uh, secrecy is called Garmini Fonseca versus People's Bank. Just for your understanding, right? Okay, now we're moving to. Uh, moving back to uh, what are the other things uh, we need to learn under uh, customer uh, charter, sorry, under customer protection is uh, the credit counseling center. It is in your handout, right? Now, the credit counseling center is established by Sri Lanka Banks Association and it was called in. Uh, in Upadeshana, that was established in 2009. Upadeshana, uh, the place is center is located in uh, Rajagiriya Center uh, for Bank Studies, right? Um, at CBSL, right? At Rajagiriya, right? Now, uh, now, what the primary target group of counseling is? financially distressed persons now see you have taken a customer has taken um loan from a bank so he may having some problem he's not a willful defaulter right he's not a willful defaulter he's he having some problem uh, to oblige his law uh, pay their his, their loans to the bank right maybe some reasons now he can go to the uh fine uh, credit counseling center can get advice from them can get advice from credit counseling center <laughs> right and they will tell you how to pay and how to uh, change your business right he may so the credit counseling center will give you a solution for customers problems right how to avoid this uh, <coughs> financial um issues or financial uh, problems so uh, and also sometimes the counselors can still they can go to the lending institution and talk on behalf of the borrower to try to give some uh, you know some concession to the borrower because he's not a willful defaulter he's a genuine borrower he's had some problem maybe due to some illness or something right so uh, the counselor will try to help him so those also benefited by the um, by the customers because customers can um, obtain the support from credit counseling center uh, if there is any sort of a problem faced by the customers. Now, up to now, uh, under um, under the topic of uh, uh, customer protections and laws and practices, uh, to uh, we have learned a lot, right? Just to summarize under that, first one, what are the customer protection laws and practices so that means what are the uh, regulatory and other things available for customer to protect from financial institution right one you know AR. you know what do you mean by AR? annual effective rate so why we need to publish annual effective rate not to mislead the customer right okay we learned that and then we discussed the importance of nomination in bank account right and the civil procedure courts and give your benefits to the customer right if you have some problem so nominate your account balances another party it can be changed also right nomination facility also uh, protection of customers and then we discussed 
financial ombudsman. Remember, the role of a financial ombudsman. Also facilitate customers for their some disputes, right? Then we have deposit and liquidity, uh, deposit, deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme. Can you remember? So we have uh, discussed in greater length on that and 600,000 per customer per institution. Now you saw recently the central bank has canceled or um, canceled the business license of uh, ETI and Swarna Mahal. And in this year, uh, three institutions are uh, going to, uh, customers of these three institutions are going to get uh, some insurance claim uh, what, what is the first one? The finance. Then second one, ETI, and the third one, Sornama. Right. So these three financial institutions registered under Central Bank of Sri Lanka are uh, now uh, their customers are getting up to maximum of six hundred thousand per customer per institution under these schemes. Right. Okay. Then we discuss customer charter in detail how customer charter facilitate to protect the customers right and then we discuss um, again we discuss uh, financial misselling right how to avoid financial misselling and then under that we discuss uh, education financial education and financial literacy and financial inclusion right those are the three things we learn under financial misselling and then we discussed uh, last week uh, the what the uh, bank's duty of confidentiality. And so customers are protected from banks are not supposed to give any personal information or bank information to third parties unless otherwise for under three reasons. One, when the court want to disclose information. Second one, bank want to recover the loans that we have given. Then in, sometimes the bank need to disclose all this confidential information. And the third, white like crib and like uh, inland run, inland uh, revenue department. So we need to give customers information. Other than these uh, uh, three reasons, so we are not supposed to give any details of the customers' uh, information that is comes covered under secrecy law, right? And then we discussed a little while ago. Uh, the credit counseling sector right now the examiner asked from you what are the initiatives or what are the um, laws and practices established by the uh, Sri Lankan uh, banking industry in order to uh, protect the customers uh, you can put all this uh, all these uh, methodologies, right? Okay, clear now, right? Okay, right. Now let's now we go to look at it. Now, can you remember earlier we discussed why regulation is important for financial institution? First one is what to protect customers. Second one to maintain the soundness of financial institution. Third one, maintain the stability of the financial system. Third one, avoid using financial institution to do un or legal unlawful businesses through the banking system. Those are the four reasons why we need regulation. Right now, we have just completed one part to protect customers. What action, what regulatory, or what customer protection laws and practices available to protect the customer? Clear now? Right now, we are going to look at it another important area. We need to protect the financial institution also. Right? Financial institution. Uh, you know what happens uh, if one financial institution collapse? What happened? Like Corona, no? What happened? It have a uh, contagious impact. That means, 
if you if you look at it one financial institution is closed people try to withdraw all the financial institutions money why they are lost the trust and confidence you know our business is depend on what fully based on customers trust and confidence right so therefore the maintain the soundness of financial institution is important otherwise what happened if one institution collapsed and they have a knock on effect that means other institutions going to collapse that what you call in uh, in banking uh, uh, jargon we call contingency effects right patriyami avadama it will lead to bank run right it will lead to bank run okay contingency so so then what requirements so or what protections available for banks in this sense right okay the first one is what you call parallel execution right i think most of you are may be aware about parallel execution that is the recovery of loans by banks special provision act number 4 of 1990 so that act deals with parallel execution procedure by bank what what do you mean by a parate parate mean not that parate ya kotturu tu ay ekane me parate mean is a, is a is a word uh, we call uh, immediate sale right is called immediate uh, sale right what do you mean by a parate is an immediate sale right now is a classic example now customers are um, or borrowers are taking loan from bank from the depositors money suppose the some customers are taking loan and they are not paying back the loan as agreed so then what happens is in effect the uh, depositors so therefore there must be a law to protect the banks from these defaulters suppose if they you don't have a uh, things like this some law like this if you go for a normal case the when you go for uh, court you know what happened no every time is postponed 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 right you want bank not in a position to get the loan back right so in order to prevent that uh, the uh, there is a law what you call the recovery of loans by bank special provision act number 4 of 199 is commonly called the mess parate execution right so according to this law that was revised in uh, one of 2011 banks are restricted to exercise parate right to recover loans is given more than 5 million now before 2011 any amount bank can execute this parate or my mean the recovery of banks but now from 2011 onwards it was limited loan can be recovered under this law if more than 5 million now you as a banker you need to be careful if some customer comes for a loan for take a housing loan and is asking i need only 4.5 million loan facility what what do you mean by that that mean he, he is well aware about this parat execution right so bankers must give more than 5 million right then only he can cover under this law otherwise we have to go for normal law civil law is is a take more time time wasting money wasting but customers money we have to pay right okay so then uh, then there's a questions came about the principal amount borrowed now the now parat execution what is the total value if you can execute the value a loan value is more than 5 million more than 5 million more than 5 million right so then there is a famous case came uh, so what is the principal amount so they said not with interest the principal amount borrowed you cannot consider that 5 million with interest 
Suppose now a person took a loan for 4 million. For an example, person took a loan for 4 million. Right? So according to this law, that means one of 2011 amended to the initial para recovery of loans by bank, Act number 4 of 1990. So you are not supposed to covered under this law. Why? Because your loan amount is how much? 4 million. But then you are not paid interest and late payments. All things comes. Now loan total amount is outstanding. Comes to 5 million or maybe 5.1 million. The question comes whether can we apply this law? No. So that is why they say the principal amount borrowed. It has to be implemented. It has to customer to need to be taken more than 5 million. That is the principal amount. Right? Okay. In 2005 also, uh, there's a very famous school you are learning under uh, uh, HN, uh, under the law especially. Now, this law cannot be executed for Garanto, right? Garanto also have a house, but bank cannot execute this parate for Garanto's property. Only bank can execute this law for the borrower's property, and that is the very famous case called Ramachandran versus HNB. Ramachandra versus HNB, the Supreme Court give a division because HNB tried to cover the customer's loan for the guarantor's property. No. Then clearly the uh, decisions given by the Supreme Court, the bank can only recover from the property mortgage by the borrower, not any guarantor. Right? That's the decision. Now this parat execution has come now is a little bit of problem. Now the new case we call Sumudu Sanjeevini Nanayakara versus HNB. Now the judgment given by three recent judges that was in 2017 have a big problem to the bank. What is this case? Sumudu Sanjeevini Nanayakara versus HNB. Right? Now the now this case is saying oh, the issue is the principal amount the principal amount. now i'll tell you some story about this case now the judges are arguing like this now see customer customer took a loan worth 8 million say for an example Customer took a loan worth 8 million. Right? Customer took a loan for bank 8 million. Right? Now he's paying slowly and slowly. And now balance is, say for an example, 3 million. Now, customer, what is the original value of the loan? 8 million. But customer is paying regularly and present value is 3 million. Now he having some problem. So he's not paying back. So bank can file actions against the customer under this low parat execution. Can recover the loan selling their property. Okay. That's the argument. Now. The judges are telling a person took a loan for 4.5 million. Another customer took a loan for 4.5 million. But he has been paid only one installment. Now his outstanding is 4.3 million. Now, according to this new this law, we can't execute parate for the person who took 4.5 low because it has to be more than 5 million but whereas 
the person who took loan for 8 million and paid and balance is only 3 million, we try to get the property from him. So there is an argument, no? The guy who has took the 8 million paid up to 3 million. Now the balance is only 5 mil, 3 million, but we are trying to execute. We are going to sell his property. But the person took a loan for 4.5 million has paid only one installment. Still outstanding is 4.3. We can't do anything. Fair enough, no? So that is the judgment uh, about this Sumudu Sanchi Vini and Jana Nayakara. So therefore now uh, there is a problem we are facing, the banks are facing about this case. So there may be a judgment against all this thing. And there's a you are going to learn more on lore on this, right? Just for your understanding. But Debt recovery law may at least have benefited to the bank to collect uh, the loans given by customer uh, through this without going for normal civil procedure, right? Okay, now you look at it. The past questions came from uh, your paper, our paper, in 2014. What may be the answer? Now, this is the 2014 question, September appeared in the first Christian paper. I mean, under new syllabus, 2014, the new syllabus started. The syllabus, what we are learning. What may be the correct answer? What may be the correct answer? Right? Okay. Right? What may be the correct answer? I'll just ask from someone. It's okay. Anusha, Ravichandran, what may be the correct answer? Anusha, you are with me. You can un unmute and tell me. Right? Anusha, what's the answer? Ah, you have left the meeting. Okay. Chalani, you can unmute and tell me. Right? Mohammed Dishan, what may be the correct answer? I like to speak. You all like uh, hear your nice voice. Uh, right. What is Anusha? What's the answer? Anusha, rejoin. No. What be the answer for the question? What is the maximum amount of uh, answer B? Right. Okay. So you have given me answer. Answer B. Right. Okay. Answer B. Clear. Right. Okay. Answer B. Correct answer is answer B. Correct. Now, what may be the answer for this? What is the act which covered priority execution? What's the answer? It's a model answer. I usually this type of answers may yeah, ask from your legal but uh, paper, but sometimes they can ask on this. What is the act? Famously called parate execution. Right? 4 of 1990? No, no. Then there may be after that, there may be a amendments. No? If you really look at the correct answer is D. Because Debt Recovery Act number 4 of 1990 and amendments. Right? And amendments. Thereafter, there may be a one amendments. Right? 2005 and 2011. Right, so answer may be just for your understanding. Okay, now let's look at it. Another famous institutions available for banks to uh, to protect them, financial institution from bad customers. Right? Okay, this is what you call credit. Uh, Crip we famously we call them as Crip. That is. Uh, Credit Information Bureau, right? That was established in uh, 18 of 1990 and amended by Act Number 18. So, what is the main objective of the CRIP? Sometimes the examiner can ask from you, what is the main objective of establishing a CRIP, right? The first, create a conducive environment for people to obtain credit, right? So, now what banks are doing? 
banks, if a customer comes to borrow some loan, usually we get into the grip and see whether he is a good customer or bad customer whether he is uh, how many loans he has taking and whether he has paying their loans and all and things like that and crip will facilitate for banks to take a evaluate your customer right whether he's a good customer or not whether he has uh, how his credit um, worthiness right thereby it facilitate to create a conducive environment for people to obtain a credit. So if a good guy comes, I mean, it's give, from, uh, give a crib will facilitate is a very genuine and uh, worthy custom, right? Okay. The second objective to facilitate the distribution of credit to all sectors of the economy and enhance financial integrity and stability why because people get to know if you have not paid your name is getting going to the grip and whatever so you're not going to get any loans so therefore he's avoiding right getting to the grip right thereby facilitating or enhancing the financial integrity these are the two main objectives of CRIP, right? And the third one you also can say, and CRIP encourage responsibility of the people and who then become credit worthy in the eyes of the banks and other lending institutions, right? It's like, a, you know, when you apply for a job, sometime when you got a job, uh, you was requested to bring police report or maybe get a, um, uh, grammar say workers uh, uh, certificate. No, what grammar say? I know him so much of so many years like that. Is a good, uh, good having a good character like that, right? Policy, policy report mean what do you mean by that? So you are not guilty for any criminal activity, right? So some get some clearance about you. Likewise, crib provides some clearance to you right that's another important thing and banks also protected because of that why because banks are not some banks are can evaluate the customer when they are granting a loan right customer whether it's a good customer or bad customer right and apart from that apart from that crib also facilitate lot of carried out lot of functions now what are the functions sometimes the examiner can ask from you what are the objective and what are the functions of crib at least you need to write two or three functions of crib and write collect uh, collate and uh, synthesize all the informations pertaining to the credits to and giving to the required people right all banks are having crib so all banks can access to the crib customers informations are there you can get the full track record of the customer right okay and also remember sometimes you also can as a person also can obtain a reports from um, from the institution crib as i reports okay then uh, they may carry out sometimes credit ratings activities, right? So CRIP is carried out sometimes the credit rating, like our foreign uh, rate credit agencies are doing. Then um, provide some reports to the uh, institution at their request. And also uh, they can carry out um, researchers uh, if this ex, um, institution want to carry out some research and also uh, carry out some research. And CRIP can provide institution to develop credit scoring systems, right? There are so many things, right, you can provide to the banks, right? Now we just discussed what is the main objective of the CRIP and what are the 
functions of crib okay so through the crib bank can uh, maintain their soundness but not giving loans to subprime customers subprime mean low dishonored customers okay right so we discuss crib and then also there is another facility another law available for banks uh, what you call debt recovery special provisions act number 2 of 1990 right not 4 of 1990 2 of 90 and this act also provide extraordinary power to banks and lending institution section in the 30 of the act to customers um, banks to recover loans for customers right as a special loan and without going to the courts okay so you need to remember that there's another law first law is mortgage law that is what we call four of 1990 we call them as a parat execution and the second law for personal loans and things like that you can execute two of 1990 right all these law all these things are available for uh, to maintain the soundness of the financial institution right and there may be a lot of other uh, regulations are imposed to financial institution by our regulator central bank of sri lanka to maintain the soundness of individual financial um, institution the first one is statutory reserve ratio i think you know what you mean by your statutory reserve ratio right what is the present statutory ratio now what is statutory ratio i think you may going to learn this one under survey right survey as well as the uh, commercial bank can anyone um, can uh, anyone tell me uh, what is the present uh, existing statutory reserve ratio statutory reserve ratio mean uh, amount of um, deposits uh, held by the uh, central bank uh, for commercial banks what is the present reserve statutory reserve ratio uh, commercial bank may need to maintain with the central bank can anyone tell me right uh, any any uh, any person right uh how much is so two percent or three percent five percent six percent seven percent what is the amount right okay okay right one person has put two percent exactly correct two percent the present ratio is uh two percent right okay two percent right statue ratio okay right the first point is two percent answer is two percent right second one is single borrower exposure that means a financial institution cannot give loans to a one single customer right so otherwise what happens suppose you are you are diversifying your risk by not giving loans to one customer so under single borrower exposure according to the central bank of sri lanka bank can give maximum of 30 percent of their capital to a individual borrower so individual bank can have a different um, amount but according to the central bank bank cannot give more than 30 percent of the bank's capital to one single borrower for a group of company yes bank can give 33 percent from the total capital right so why because if suppose your loan is given to one person if that person's business is collapsed you are exposing to high risk so in order to prevent that 
to protect your financial institution central bank has introduced a regulatory measure called single borrower exposures for second one third one capital adequacy requirement now are you aware about that so i think that also you are going to learn and uh, again the commercial banks as well as the survey capital adequacy requirement what is the capital you need to maintain in your bank so right? there are two uh, ratios uh, established by the bank from 2020 by the central bank every bank need to maintain the the banks who are not categorized as not categorized as domestically significantly important banks they need to maintain 12.5 percent how much 12.5 percent the bank categorized as domestically significantly important banks there are two types of categories under that one is bucket one bucket two bucket three right so under that so we have bank of ceylon and commercial banks are categories and the bucket two right so they need to maintain 12.5 percent plus 1.5 all together how much 1.5 13 14 percent we call that 1.5 percent as high loss absorption ratio right 1.5 12.5 14% there are another two significantly important banks in sri lanka under bucket one category we call them as people's bank and hnb so those two banks need to maintain 12.5% plus 1% so that is how much 13.5 all other banks other than these four banks how many banks in sri lanka we had around all together how many banks 34 banks right all banks need to maintain 12.5 capital adequacy requirement i just just explained i'm not want to deal all these things but you can learn all these under survey and commercial bank what is capital adequacy requirement but presently because of this covid right that um, that requirement is reduced by uh for 12.5 banks are go now need to maintain 12 percent but all other significantly important banks need to uh, reduce by one percent like now people's bank and hnb so therefore you they need to maintain around 12.5 whereas the uh, uh whereas the uh people Bank of Ceylon and Commercial Bank need to maintain 13%. But regularly, 12.5, 13.5, and 14. Right? And this is capital adequacy requirement you need to maintain. Right? So that basically why we need to have a capital adequacy requirement. If some some problem faced by the bank, so bank is having sufficient capital to absorb all these risk thereby protecting the financial institution that is why regulator impose capital adequacy requirements by for individuals banks right okay clear then there may be a liquidity requirements also what is the present liquidity requirement you need to maintain by a bank is what you call 20 percent from your total right 20 percent you need to maintain and apart from that uh, there's a two new uh liquidity requirement also introduced by uh basel three and that is what you call liquidity uh coverage ratio liquidity coverage ratio and uh stable net stable funding ratio so these things don't worry so we are going to learn under survey and commercial banking but you need to understand at present is 100 percent now what do you mean by liquidity coverage ratio mean how much of 
liquidity uh, assets you are having within these 30 days if you have a problem now next table funding rate what are the liquidity assets you are having to meet one year liquidity requirement right okay so the liquid requirement you need to maintain uh, for day-to-day -day operation is 50 percent right but occur again these uh, under the COVID because of that uh, central bank has bring down from 100 percent to 90 percent of these uh, highly liquid uh, liquidity coverage ratio and net stable funding ratio bring from 100 to 90 percent now presently but liquid requirements you need to maintain 20 percent but why these because why liquidity is important customers are worried about customers liquidity customers are not worried about the bank's profits right why they are worried about the liquidity because if the banks have enough liquidity only the customers can take their deposits when they request it from the bank otherwise bank is having a liquidity problem bank cannot give customers deposits money right that is why customers are worried about bank liquidity so what central bank as a regulator telling banks you need to maintain uh, minimum liquidity right okay so then you have another directions given by the central bank directions of npl provisions you know in your organization npl uh, that mean non-performing loans need to be categorized uh, according to the central bank into four categories right so again i'm not going to explain all these things you are going to learn but you need to know something right so we call special mentions substandard and doubtful and uh, bad debts there are four categories right the amount of loans that mean your loan portfolio if customers are not paying me your loans so you need to identify you need to categorize your loans into four categories based on the installment three months six months like that or maybe the installment wise you are categorizing npn why because if you have a uh, categories like this you need to provide provisions for that so more you provide provisions you are reducing your profit at least then you know right you have enough again capital to run the business right bolnaya venkaran right then you have solid meva inkala still i am earning high profits right okay and apart from that uh, central bank also um, introduce uh, uh, the give a directions to uh, banks banks have must maintain a uh, integrated risk management framework uh, in your bank so banks need to identify what are the risks they are going to face how to mitigate those risks and things like that right and in 2007 2018 uh, 2007 and 2008 uh, you know the financial crisis took place so financial crisis took place uh, and they have identified uh, banks have not properly managed the risks faced by them. Now, what are the risks faced by banks usually? Liquidity risk, credit risk, operational risk, and market risk. So all financial institutions face these type of risks. If you are not identifying the risk, right? So banks are going to collapse sometimes right so therefore regulators job is to protect the bank right the soundness of financial institution right now you now understood one way bank we have a rules and regulations and practices to protect the customers and also now we'll implementing having all these things so we are going to protect the financial institution as well right now we learn up to now what are the things we learn what are the initiatives or what are the actions or what are the regulatory measurements or what are the practices 
taken by the regulators and your bank to protect customers. Second point, what actions or what regulatory measures taken by the regulators and the bank to protect the financial institution maintain their soundness without cashing? Clear? Right? I hope you understood, right? Okay. Uh, now you can move into the tube number three. And uh, I just want to just to check with you whether up to now have you uh, understood what we have, uh, what I have explained to you. Okay. Any, any, any questions, please? Any questions? I want, if you want to clarify, I will explain to you. Right? Sevandi, I've just randomly checked, right? Sevandi, you understood? Sevandi, you understood the, um, uh, up to now what we have discussed today? Right? You can just put a, a small note here. Right? Uh, Tekshana Bala Supramaniam. Right? Very difficult to get. No, if you are in front of me, I will ask from you. No, now there's no way of asking. Only only I can ask you. I can just uh from this name only I can ask. How about Taranga? Taranga Dil Ruk Have you understood? Please unmute and just tell me or send me a small chat. Yes, sir, understood. Right. Then uh, can you say the definition stand for AR? Okay, I'll just go through quickly some of I put the, some question in the chat. Uh, what is AR? AR mean annual effective rate. So we discuss uh, very first second or second lecture. What is AR? Right? Annual effective rate. Then uh, one student also asking, I uh, uh, for a board explanation, I suggest you watch the lecture of financial class. All ah, right, okay. Uh, somebody has given answer to the my uh, Anusha's question. Thank you. Right. Uh, Refo AR. Okay, so students are very good, and they have given the tube also to watch what is AR and all. Good. Then, uh, right. Okay. So uh, now we move in back to again to the uh, 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 today's uh, tute, tute number three, right? Okay, tute number three. Now we are moving to now we discuss protect customers, right? Second one, protect financial institution. Now we are going to discuss maintain the stability of the financial system. Now I told you the financial system is consist of institutions, uh, rules, regulations, uh, regulators, customers and so many things. So financial system is the backbone of any country's economy. So therefore it is a duty for us to right, stabilize so, uh, financial system in any country. So what actions or what regulations taken by the regulators and the banks to prote protect the financial system? The confidence is important. So therefore we have to maintain stability of the financial system. So now let's look at it. What are the rules and regulations available with protecting a financial stability All right okay first one we have a consumer credit act number 29 of 1982 and amended in 7 of 1990 can anybody tell me right what is the financial product covered under consumer credit act 29 of 1982. 
right can anybody tell me what is the financial product covered under consumer credit act 29 of 1982 can anybody uh, tell me what is the financial products covered under this law huh? can anybody tell me what is the financial product covered under consumer credit act no idea so very famous product no we have learned no idea okay doesn't matter uh, the financial product uh, covered under this is higher purchase right remember it is a higher purchase right higher purchase comes under this act but leasing covered under leasing act right i will explain to you on that remember your higher purchase arrangement is covered under uh, consumer credit act okay then you may have banking act banking act number 30 uh, of 1980 you know you need to know all this huh? i mean basically what is the famous uh, section we need to know on the banking act 30 of 1988 as far as the bank's employees are concerned we discussed today as well as last year what section 77 that is secrecy of confidentiality right so every employee has signed bank employee has signed right banking at 30 of 1988 and its amendments you know the last amendment took place in 2006 now, up to now, from 1988, there are five amendments have taken for Banking Act, just to modify. And maybe Central Bank going to come up with, maybe end of this year or maybe next year, they are going to totally come uh, introduce a new Banking Act. Right? Most probably 2020, uh, um, 2020 latter part of the year, or maybe early next year, uh, central bank is going to come up with a totally new act not amendments totally new acts then we have to uh, consider maybe act number like this into 2021 or things like that right so let's look at it uh, the one of the main act uh, main act um, covered here is uh, under uh, the call under the banking act is to protect the financial institutions uh, stability of the institution financial stability uh, we, we have directions on corporate governance we are going to learn some more detail in corporate governance under uh, under commercial banking right under commercial banking what is corporate governance what are the key component of uh, uh, corporate governance, the board of directors, their duties, their responsibilities, and then the compositions of board of directors, uh, um, independent directors versus uh, executive directors, um, and then the uh, fit and proper of uh, all these um, directors, and then uh, board subcommittees, then disclosures, uh, related party transactions, and uh, role of uh, CEO and the uh, chairman, like that. There are a lot of uh, directions issued by the uh, central bank. What is the main objective of purpose of corporate governance? Uh, to protect uh, how the how the organizations are uh, run and manage in a better manner for the uh, business right that is the uh, direction so it's very important to maintain the stability of the uh, financial system right then we introduced recently new law uh, foreign exchange act number 14 of 2017 there we have changed we are going to touch a little bit of that later on under the new foreign exchange act uh, we had 18 accounts and now these before that we have changed all these four uh, 18 accounts into four main accounts, right? Can remember? We are going to learn all this. Eh? Um, 
personal uh, foreign currency account, business foreign currency account, uh, IIA and uh, things like that. A new uh, law governing uh, when you are dealing with foreign currencies, right? And then we have uh, the Business Finance Act 42 of 2011, where all financial institution like uh, finance companies and leasing companies uh, are comes, comes under uh, under this business finance act right uh, then we have finance leasing act covered 56 of 2000 where leasing companies comes under this act covering under this act all these acts what happened all these acts tells you right uh, you can't just uh, you know you can't just uh, commence business you need to get a license from these respective institutions under these acts right okay then we have uh, insurance companies you know um, insurance companies uh, need to apply by uh, insurance industry act who is the regulator insurance regulatory commissions right and there are some uh, institutions uh, will regulate these institutions under these acts right why all these acts are there uh, to uh, maintain the stability of the financial institution there are so many acts right okay then you may have uh, credit card scams and payment payment devices fraud act number 30 of 2006 and they, we do you don't want to know all this lengthy right you need to understand there are some laws are there to protect the financial system stability right people need to believe this credit card right if somebody can make use of credit cards to do unwanted things that means you have lost the trust of the credit card thereby payment methodology and the system's going to impact. So therefore, laws are there to protect all this. Then we have a very famous Payment and Settlement System Act number 28 of 2005. And our credit card payment settlements, all these QR code, all this comes under this, right? Uh, then you have this theft um, uh, and all things comes under this act right and then we have card payments and mobile payments at number now of 2013 some directions also available right uh, when you do transaction through your mobile phone so there are some low also there then we have electronic transactions at number 4 19 of 2006 when you do some transactions through the electronic mean there are some laws available with us right and then we have some more act, prohibitions of pyramid scheme and this is a, a banking act now according to the central bank under the banking act the financial institution not supposed to carry out any pyramid schemes right right you know this and this is prohibited schemes right or sometimes we call network scheme same thing and banks cannot carry out lottery schemes now, can you remember earlier, banks are carried out lot of schemes, no? Now, can you remember HMB famous one, 22 years or 23 years, they carried out what? Famous one, uh, HNB is carried out. Uh, I can't remember the name, uh, the famous one. If you maintain 1,000, uh, 10,000 in your current accounts and uh, uh, like, a lot of banks are carried out, lot of lottery schemes. Now from 2014, banks can carry out lotteries, right? Only for foreign remittances can carry out, not for domestic deposits, right? Uh, what is that famous one, um, HNB carried out for a long time? Uh, I, I, can't come to your mind but you know very famous one can any uh, student um, suggest me uh, remember me what is the uh, famous um, uh, lottery scheme carried out by HNB anyone from HNB can support me on telling that mm, right no idea Silver line, not silver line. 
very famous file. What is the HNB? Uh, now they are not uh, carried out. Very famous one. If you maintain uh, uh, 10,000 in your current account or savings account, you are eligible for win a house, uh, you know, cars and things. And more banks are carried out that. Right? Okay. Uh, right. Uh, then. Uh, right uh, then we have uh, credit rating so uh, according to the we discuss um, uh, to maintain the soundness for instruments as well as the institution uh, all financial institution need to obtain a credit rating from a credit rating agency apart from that apart from that central bank also carried out but uh, so what is credit trading? I've just tried to explain to you what do you mean by credit trading. It is in your next slide. Um, credit trading uh, on the credit worthiness of an entity. You know, it can be a uh, credit trading can be get it for uh, for entity for financial institution is compulsory or maybe for customer, right? Uh, banks are carried out credit scoring scheme, right? Uh, and uh, also an instrument as well as the country so credit rating can be taken for your institution for customer for a credit instrument financial instrument or maybe for a country you can get a rating right and what is rating is uh, talking about the default to high credit and they talk about the credit worthiness to what extent you can Trust whether you are going to get back your money, right? It's good for investors, so they don't want to analyze the risk of that particular organization that investors going to risk, right? So therefore, remember, uh, it is a compulsory uh, for obtain a credit rating for a uh, all financial institution, and not only that, remember, you need to show your credit rating in your in your branch and also when you advertise you need to sh mention your credit rating right and apart from all these things the central bank as a regulator may carried out on-site and off-site supervision right to see whether the financial institutions are run well right thereby maintain the stability Okay, clear? Right. Now, apart from that also, in another important thing, uh, and they have introduced uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to maintain the stability of the financial instrument, uh, that is what you call uh, check, issuing without having the fund in your account, considered as a criminal offense. That is issuing checks without fund, a uh, section 25 of, Two of 1990. We discussed that one. Two of 1990. 90. Can you remember? We discussed under protections of financial institution. But there's a section called section 25 now. So that means give validity to your check. Now, if a person issue a check without having money in your account, it's a criminal effect. What do you mean by criminal mean? Mary matta ho, Mary matta mini marna wage wa chodana wa labanna puluwa wardak washin thamai selakan. Kenik marna wa o Mary matta tat krim. Ewa da pikina wa ni the criminal case ka kiya. Right? Eto ko ta cheke ko thalli na tu wa cheke ka ganu denu karuwe ko ta kaata ni dumnoat ganu denu karuwe. Eka api selakan wa maraniya wardak washin. Right, we consider this as a criminal offense. Right, so that is thereby improve the the value of the check, maintain the instrument's value. Right, uh, trust and confidence of the instrument, thereby maintain the stability of the financial institution. Okay, right. Now, what we have discussed up to now, what actions or what regulators has taken to maintain the stability of financial systems. Now we discuss what actions taken to protect the customers, 
what actions protect to financial institution, what actions taken to maintain the stability of the financial system. Right? Now we are going to discuss to reduce or obviate or reduce the criminal activity concerning money. The people can do a lot of businesses through the bank. Right, banks' criminal activities was estimated by the world is around five trillion. So banks are using criminal activities around five million, five trillion money. Right. So therefore, so we cannot use banking system, not allowing banking system to use. A dirty things right so therefore rules and regulations are there to protect banks by customers not to use the banking system to do ill-gotten gains right okay now let's look at it therefore right what is the laws and rules regulation available in Sri Lanka to protect not to use bank for unlawful activities, right? There are three famous, three famous laws, three famous laws. One, Money Laundering Act number no. five of 2006, very famous one. Second, Financial Transaction Report Act number no. six of 2006 and Terrorist Finance Act number no. 25 of 2005. So, Whatever the subject you are going to follow, it may be law, it may be a customer relation, customer uh, relationship management, or uh, maybe survey, or maybe commercial banking. You need to know all these three important laws, right? What are the three laws? Money Laundering Act Number no. Five of 2006. Financial Transaction Reporting Act number no. 6 of 2006 and Terrorist Finance Act number no. 25 of 2005. Okay, clear? Thank you. Right? Okay, now let's look at it. With the question, we try to uh, understand the concept called what is the objective of Know Your Customer? Remember, Know your customer rules came under Financial Transaction Reporting Act, right? Customer type, right? Know your customer comes under Financial Transaction Reporting Act, right? If the examiner asks you from you, KYC rule came on what law? Financial Transaction Reporting Act. Financial Transaction Reporting Act. Okay, right. So what is the objective of Know Your Customer? Right, what is the objective? Okay, you can write under this one, right? What is the objective of Know Your Customer? To prevent, to prevent, write down, right? To prevent the use of to prevent the use of to prevent the use of financial institutions to prevent the use of financial institution for for money laundering, money laundering, L A U N D E R I N G, money laundering, and and financing and financing other and other unlawful transaction and 
financing other unlawful transactions. Okay. Now let's see. But whether you have written correctly, what is the main objective of know your customer, which is comes under what law? All banks need to take under what law? Financial Transaction Reporting Act 6 of 2006. So what is the main objective? To prevent the use of, to prevent the use of financial institution for two things. One, money laundering. Another one, financing other unlawful transactions. Right? So you cannot use Customers cannot use banks to do all these dirty two things. Now questions comes. We talk about prevent the use of financial institution for money laundering. Right. Now let's look at it. What is money laundering? Right. Right. You can write down. I will explain. What is money laundering? Under that you can just point out what is money laundering the definition for money laundering simple right please write what is money laundering so it please write it is the process it is the process it is the process simple huh? it is the process there may be a lot of technological jargons difficult to understand but Examine expect from your very simple way. That's enough, right? To protect, it is the process by which it is the process by which large amounts of it is the process, it is the process by which large amounts of large amounts of illegally I L L E illegally, G L L Y illegally obtain money, obtain money, obtain money. How you can obtain illegal money? Within bracket you can say from within bracket you can say how you obtain illegal money. Within bracket, you can say from drug trafficking, drug trafficking, T R A F F I C K I N G, drugs trafficking, Madra, Vyapar, Kama, terrorist activity, terrorist activity. Or other serious crimes. Three ways you can collect illegal money. You can obtain illegal money three ways. One is drug trafficking. Second, terrorist activity. Or other serious crime. Right? Okay. So obtain money from these three sources is given the 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 appearance of 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 having having h a v i n g is given the appearance of having having h a v i n g h a v i n g by having originated from originated from o r i g i n a t e d originated from originated from a legitimate source originated from a legitimate legi 
a metal legitimate source so you are see right legitimate source okay i repeat it what is money laundering it is the process it is the process by which large amounts of illegally obtained money from where you get the illegally obtained money drug trafficking terrorist financing or terrorist activity or any other serious crime right but those money is given the appearance of having originated from a legitimate source right simply if you say right the black money you are trying to claim it that's the process that is called money laundering the black money we are earning money all these through illegal form try to clean it simply right okay so that is the money laundering so what is the objective to prevent the use of financial institution for money laundering and financing other unlawful transaction to prevent that you need to know the cust know your customer procedure right so covered under what law customer compulsory make it to get a kyc is under financial transaction and reporting act okay so then 2016 questions we look at it from the question we try to get the meaning what is the type of information obtained under kyc what is the type of information obtained by you under kyc when the customer comes to your open an account or do some transaction what is the type of information you are going to get it what you are asking information about the personal data identification of customer identification what what identity identity can be given by the customer form of national identity nic number or maybe driving license or maybe your passport so these are the three important you can identify yourself right so what is the information you required under kyc first a uh, individual identity identity form national identity card passport so all are valid right okay second information you need to know is your address your address so you are you are usually your your identity card or your uh, driving license or your passport having your per address permanent address right but now you are telling no this is not my address and then bank asking what to prove your address maybe some uh, providing your telephone bill or maybe a water bill or maybe a uh, electricity bill you can provide your present address if not with if you want to change it your what permanent address mentioned in your about three identifications right okay most important thing you ask from occupation 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 right these are the three important things right i'll tell you a quick example the importance of occupation right now is a classic example uh, which took place for national service bank in the branch for you know sakviti sakviti sir right who carried out some illegal pyramid businesses in sri lanka gave higher interest rate to customers who deposit now when sakviti when customers comes to the deposit the money with the sakviti and what sakviti is showing to the uh, customers national savings banks the deposits fb certificates deposit by the sakviti to customer but they really buy me in the palm of me but and mage naming Saliti, you know, National Savings Bank, okay, millions, millions, millions. Yeah, that's that. That's what I'm talking about. Certificate, print, and original label, customer. 
customer build the trust mya mona hari unna me salli thiyena me hata gewa okay now when the national savings bank people when sakwedi come and open an account during that time this kyc principles are not much much there right therefore nsp may we get rid of that issue when the customer then the sakwedi comes and deposits every time we be 1 million 2 million every day sakwedi comes and deposit his name 2 million 3 million 4 million every day so then it is a duty of national savings bank that counter girl to ask why here if you get all this information what is his occupation occupation is a teacher you can ask from the person concerned being a teacher how you are going to get such a money from every day that mean you are involving in some illegal business that is why kyc is important the occupation if somebody and ask how you are become a teacher how you deposit 1 million every day now today's concern if a money comes like that you need to support you are you are you are supposed to be informed to your manager and through the management you need to inform to fiu right i will discuss on this now you see how important to know the occupation right these are the type of information you need to update right and there's another document also comes cdd also comes under what is cdd cdd you can write customer due diligence customer under cdd you can write what is cdd mean customer due due diligence diligence right d l i g n c e delicate c d d c d d also like k y c are requested by under what law financial transaction reporting act right c d d is a requirement in regulation issued by the f i u what is f i u i'm going to discuss a little later on financial intelligence unit established under FTRA Financial Transaction Reporting Act, which is situated in Central Bank, is a separate unit. We look after all these money laundering, terrorist finance, and activities (KYC) Act. Identify the financial transaction and income sources. Income sources. When the customer comes to deposit the money, you have a forms. No, can you ask from where you get this money? Ah. Huh? from your savings from businesses or any other please specify so you need to get the income sources right income sources go in the to make sure the salary you have to disclose right okay so again the cddt like kyc also facilitate right to prevent money laundering right usually then the examiner then you may have some problem what is the different kyc also doing the same thing cdd also you do the same thing usually remember cdd we are usually supposed to collect from a businesses uh, business people you need to collect cdd from where you get the money what is the financial transaction is usually taking place what are your income sources especially from businesses you need to obtain cdd right so therefore the kyc and the cdd both are fighting anti money laundering right those two uh, reports two things also fight money laundering right preventing happening illegal businesses in the banking okay two documents now let's look at it again from 2018 so there's a questions call 
what actions can be taken by a bank to prevent money laundering activities what action bank can take uh, you are you are, you, are, you, are, you want to stop banks are not involving in money laundering activities bank you are not supporting any activity for as a bank employee as a bank what what you can do to prevent this money laundering first one under that you can write apply kyc practices if a customer comes always know you are customer so you can say first point what actions action what kyc practices apply kyc practices every time you know you are customer you can get the information beneficial ownership approach analysis beneficial ownership analysis no sometimes some people and the legal person they deposit the money for me i am the legal well recognized person but when i am writing my fds or whatever i will tell please send please send my interest to so and so that person may be hora that person may be use my for uh, this money for illegal transaction so therefore you need to ask the moment the customer give unless otherwise if it's not put into your own savings account if you give your interest to some other person or maybe have standing orders to some other person you need to look at it to whom you are going to give thereby you can prevent money laundering right right second beneficial ownership analysis third point third action obtaining details of credit to the account obtaining details of credit to the account obtaining details of credit to the account coin the from where you get the this money for when you are crediting to account from your salaries from your businesses or from where you get this money so obtaining details of credit to the account you get the details from where you get this money what purpose third point obtaining details of credit to the account right these are the three main things or maybe any other activity right okay these are the three action bank can take in for preventing money laundering activity okay so why we need to emphasize the importance of anti money laundering why bank need to do all these things first one money laundering and terrorist finance that tf mean terrorist finance can have devastating consequences to the world community that means halli arang muka kar hora wedak nikaran samani janatawata vinasayak mai kar right so consequences to the whole community second to mitigate high reputational and commercial risks involving in money laundering suppose the people get to know this money came from your bank so tarnish your reputation that mean your bank is not follow proper kyc or your bank may be indirectly supporting this type of activity so it is tarnish your reputation to prevent that to mitigate that third one criminal and terrorists can use the illicit funds to further their illegal activities now he may use of another illegal activities being ara tava tava horra wede karana horra illegal wede so you are not supposed to do that your bank is not supposed to facilitate that right third one fourth one the financial institution may suffer as a result of criminals or terrorists taking charge for their businesses you may have a penalty by the regulator Ah, uh, they may charge. 
supporting illegal activities. You may cancel your license. That is why we need to emphasize the importance of any monitoring. It may be damage the country's economy. Right? Okay. So this is the well, these are the reason emphasizing importance of animal anti-money laundering requirements. Banks need to follow. Clear? Right. So now we like to look at it some model questions. Right? And this model question will support for you to understand some areas. Okay. Now, right? Okay. Can now, can you answer to these questions? Right? So if you can give me the answer is ideal. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you can just think if you can give me the answer is good. Otherwise you just think uh, what may be the answer, right? Okay, let's look at the first question. The first question uh, is a model question. KYC is, right? What is KYC? What may be the correct answer of this? What is the KYC? To prevent the use of financial institution for money laundering and financing other unlawful transactions? Yes, no, that's the objective of KYC, right? Okay, I give you one, uh, okay. Yeah, we, we'll have another 10, 12 minutes. Okay, I'll give you a 10 second. What may be the answer? Second, compulsory under financial transaction reporting. It is true, right? KYC, right? Okay, uh, right. Look at the other, other, other questions, okay? Uh, KYC is need to take by all the banks under what law compulsory under financial transaction reporting act no that's also correct or wrong that also correct no first one also correct second one also correct no right because i told you kyc comes under right comes under that okay then the third one third one okay i, I can see some questions answers are coming up third one Screening the customer to check whether they are involved in any terrorist finance activity. That's also correct, no? That is why we need to get. So the last one is facilitate all about. So therefore, the answer is three uh, D. Right now, if the examiner asks you, we now why I give this question? These questions is tells you. Is a sort of a sort of a model, a sort of a small node. What is the KYC? So you can write A, B, C. When when you want to ask, write short notes about the KYC. Write A, B, C. Right? Don't write B. Right? All about. That's wrong. No. Right? A, B, C. Clear? Right? What is the KYC? answer d so you can write a short note then you move into the second one ftra so what is ftra ftra mean financial transaction reporting act 6 of 2006 not obliged to not obliged to what is the answer first one appoint compliant officer who would be responsible for the institution to comply with the act now i think if you are working in a bank right every organization must have a compliance officer right now what is his job his job it is ensure that your bank is adhere to or properly comply with all the rules and regulations imposed by the central bank or our regulator or at the uh can't see the current side oh right okay i will put into the slide right it is i don't know it is not there right okay it is there in your handout no right okay ftrs 6 of 2006 this is in your handout 
right? Okay, doesn't matter, right? Appoint compliance officer who would be responsible of the institution complied with the act. Yes, that also correct. Not to oblige, right? Answer neti eka, eka hari. Financial transaction report teke tamai bank water compliance officer ke neka pat karan no ni kela ni te gata karla te inne ouge o age rakia job eka venne bank wa nisya karing rate pavati na nitiya saha niyama ke viting idri pat karna niti viti nivaradi lesa pili pili padina wa dai soya bali ma right so the compliance management compliance role you are going to learn more details in your DAPF right okay right second one tipping off an offense what do you what do you mean by tipping off an offense mean pre-warning right so financial transaction reporting will tell you right if you are not follow you are going to have a problem it's give you some sort of a pre-warning that's also correct right okay pre-warning because financial transaction reporting tells you to identify what kyc and cdt that means so you are protecting by not doing any anti money laundering act uh, money laundering sorry not anti money laundering activities right why because it tells you ftr tells you to take kyc and that is facilitate tipping off an offense right okay D, we're going for a C, report transactions about the value of 1 million or no, 2 million electronic transaction. Now, you know, according to the Financial Transaction Reporting Act, all banks are supposed to report transactions done by a individual. What is the minimum amount, maximum amount? That is called CFT reports. You need to now computer generate now. One million. Whether it is a electronic fund transfer or any transaction, what is the maximum value of threshold amount? One million in Sri Lanka. If a customer do a transaction is more than one million, it has to be recorded and report. That's the report form called cfp right people who know me not two million so it both from cash or electronic fund transfer or whatever the form whatever the mode maximum value is one million that is a threshold level of financial transaction so therefore the answer is c but what is d all suspicious transaction all transaction irrespective of the magnitude you need to report to FIU. FIU mean Financial Intelligence Unit. It is the local agent who look after all these illegal transactions of anti-money laundering or money laundering and things like that. Right? So any suspicious transaction that somebody can say you need to suspicious transaction value is 1 million. No. It suspicious mean any amount even 10 rupee even 5 rupee you feel it as a counter person as a counter you accept in the customer's cash you think me if you feel it guilty it's a suspicion transfer there is no limit but the threshold limit is 1 million but for transaction suspicious transaction there is no limit so therefore right d also correct right Okay, now we move into the your past question. I think now you can answer. March 2015, question number one, right? The Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, Sri Lanka was established under what law? I think it's simple, right? Financial, like KYC and CDD established under what law? Likewise, Financial Intelligence Unit in Sri Lanka, who manage the Financial Institutional Unit, Central Bank of Sri Lanka, right? What is the act covered as? Financial Transaction Reporting Act. So the Financial Transaction Reporting Act tells you to maintain KYC and CDD. Is uh, was requested to in uh, requested to what? 
appoint compliance officer two things are then establish fiu so financial transaction reporting act three things kyc and cdd appoint of compliance officer and establishment of fiu is necessary under this law okay following is not a functions of responsibility now i'll give you this question because of to know what is fiu right what is fiu clear fiu right if you want to ask a short note about the fiu right then what is the first one issues rules and guidelines to financial institution on kyc and cdd why that's so if i use establish under what law what law right some more short notes if i use established under financial transaction reporting act uh, if i was was established if i you record financial information on unlawful activities remember record financial information on unlawful activities it is a duty of fiu third one conduct awareness programs and enter into agreement with local and foreign parties to share information it is a duty of fiu to conduct awareness programs right about what is money laundering and what is uh, KYC and things like that? What is terrorist finance? It is a duty. And if FIU is not covered under pyramid scheme, because pyramid scheme covered under Banking Act, but if FIU covered under what act? Financial Transaction Report Act. So therefore, answer is T, not function, because Provision of pyramid schemes covered under Banking Act, but FIU covered under what act? Financial Transaction Reporting Act. That's the question you appeared in 2015. Right? Okay. Right. Now, I'll, in addition to that, I'll give you a last questions. This was not given to you by me in your paper, but these questions came on 2015 two months what may be the correct answer for this customer due diligence is intended to what may be the correct answer what may be the correct answer customer due diligence is intended to what may be the correct answer right anybody knows what may be the correct answer right fight money laundering good very good fight money laundering majority of you have uh, given me the uh, correct answer very good so let's look at it now you see now you know the form no fight money laundering promote customer relationship reduce loan default right now you see the same questions came in 2018 only different wording difference right 2018 march what may be the correct customer due diligence is intended to without telling fight but they say avoid avoid money laundering right avoid money laundering so you see a lot of repetitive type of questions are appearing in your paper right now with this one we are going to cover the financial customer protection laws and practices clear right so next week i am going to discuss with you uh, some other points like risk prudent risk management and internal controls right you may heard about banks full of dual control what is dual control what is a dormant account how to activate the dormant account 
what is the use of passwords what are the type of risk you are going to face right and things like that we are going to cover right okay so i think you understood today the uh, customer to t1 to t3 we talk about customer protections laws important things you need to know what are the laws and protection mechanism available for customers by regulators or the banks second what actions or what practices adopted by banks to protect their soundness of individual financial institution third one what are the laws and practices to uh, maintain the financial system stability and the fourth one we just learned what are the uh, laws and regulations available or practices available for banks to not to involving any what money laundering activity right okay so with this so we have come to an end of the today's session so we are basically covered uh, a lot now uh, so from uh, i want to develop your uh, exam um, so it all depend your exam somebody may ask when we are going to have the exam uh, we wait and see uh, maybe from uh, monday because the government may going to establish or uh, announce the when you when we are going to have your a level uh, exams uh, suppose the exams going to have it on uh, october definitely the exams going to have it after october right you should because we are uh, need to carry it out uh, basically uh, exams going to conduct in schools so we have to uh, wait till a level finish so so therefore we have a little time maybe october maybe november i don't know but tentatively i'm just telling you so we need to practice more questions right so i need your help in that sense uh, so i can put uh, one or two more questions or oh, otherwise we can spend one day to answer i'll give you a module question papers uh, like this i will send it to you uh, before uh, our session start and you may answer question answer and then i will discuss the uh, answers a particular day or we can allocate one day to question answer uh, like a tutorial like in campus we have a tutorial classes but we have learned up to now some question on that maybe past paper so maybe model question we we'll try to answer discuss the answers that's a one way we can use one day for that or maybe every day before you start the lecture uh, we'll discuss one question right tell me uh, your views on that you you can just chat with me uh, and uh, options right which one you like prefer which uh, the first one one you use one day for question answers or me every day we'll have we'll give you one question and we try to discuss one that question which is more good for you all i will do that so we need uh, we don't know your uh, your whether you are understood or whether you are understanding how to write the answers we want to develop your answer in skill right please um, uh, if you have a chat you just chat me uh, and uh, give your views so uh, we will uh, accordingly we'll do that okay so um, uh right so i just uh, unfortunately i i have on a few names here uh so i will take uh, i okay how about mohammed so you understood up to day up to now what we have discussed right mohammed uh, you yes right thank you uh suan suan d jay singh you are okay so you understood right so i didn't get your feedback uh, miss uh, suandi and then uh, taranga suandi okay just taranga right what 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 is the best method do you want a question if before i start the session or maybe you want a entire uh, day we allocate 
um, uh, one day for question answer or may every day we'll do one question which one is preferred option a or b you can give option a mean every day we'll do one question option b is we allocate one day to do questions and answers but we have learned up to now right uh, a is that a is every day every right a is good right uh, right okay just put down a b a a is better so majorities are telling a is better right okay it's okay then uh, from next week i will incorporate uh, for you uh, one uh, question for your tutor right so then uh, i will do it in next week right so that question so it is your duty to um, uh, answer and keep it yourself right i am not going to check you know right oya gena gatto to oya pass mama rang yanne ni mata dem pass inna unne ni ned so therefore so next week in the new, in the new tutor i will incorporate um one or two three small question three four questions or one long question i see whether with my time permit i may give three four small multiple question short answer question or two three four question and a one big question it may be a fast paper or something right and next day uh, suppose if i give next week i'm not going to discuss that one for the following month following week i am going to discuss that question so please answer keep your answer script ready see whether uh, what i am telling you you have put down or maybe if you need to more other thing. if i have not tell something you also tell me uh, we are not happy of course he all that ni mean neither so you all have tell me so why not put this answer right so i need from you a good uh, dialogue right okay so at the classroom i can ask no now here i can't ask then only can check with you right okay then thank you very much uh, be careful uh, use your uh, mask or whatever you wear it every time to protect your uh, uh, privacy and and then i will see you on next week okay right thank you very much and we'll come up with a new tutor next week